Welcome back. And now we're ready to start our humorous speech contest. Let me remind everybody once again, turn it off for silence through electronic devices. In case anybody took a peek during break, we should hold on silent. Remember that we will not want anybody entering or leaving during the contestants' presentations. We want to keep our whole contest fair. And I will ask the contestants if you want a microphone, a wireless microphone, to be aiming in the back of the room during that minute of silence. We'll get that coordinated. We have six contestants tonight. I think we're in for a good time. <laughs> Contestant number one, the Jenna Aduel. Jenna Aduel. Contestant number two, Beth Reed. Contestant number three, Cobble Mystery. Contestant number four, Akash Jablani. Contestant number five, Patrick Dubit. Contestant number six, Jim Cudney. Contestants have all been briefed as have the judges, so we are ready to let the contest begin. Contestant number one, Vigida Alguella, Joy of Business Travel. Vigida Alguella, Joy of Business Travel. Turning back and see the silver line. 
Now I have four hours to eat my bagel. <laughs> <laughs> Toasted bagel with cream juice until the next flight. On the same train, on the way back, I'm traveling with Manoj. I call my wife and tell her that we landed. I go to the parking lot. I can't remember where I parked the car. Not even on the right floor. So we look around for about half an hour. <laughs> then I say, Manoj, you stay right here. And I went and found a guy who works there. So we circle the entire O'Hare short term parking lot <laughs> <laughs> and find the car. And now I'm in the car and thinking, where did I ask Manoj to stay? <laughs>
Our next contestant, Beth Reed. Why does my family keep trying to kill me with a car? <laughs> Why does my family keep trying to kill me with a car? Beth Reed. Was 
to the synagogue, luckily. But needless to say, it was quite a few years before I let her drive me anywhere. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> and, again, this would just be one of those stories that we tell at the holidays. Oh, remember those days when you tried to do a <laughs> No big deal. Except I have one more. This one's more recent. A couple years back, I go and I visit my brother and his family in St. Paul. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever been to St. Paul, but it's an older town. So there are narrow streets and parking lots are sort of put into small areas. Luckily, my brother and my sister-in-law have a Prius. Small car, small spot, everything is good. So we decide to go to this great place for lunch. We pull in to the spot, everything's great. We go off, we have a great lunch. Ah, this is awesome. Now, um, we're ready to come back. And everything's great. We're talking about our great lunch. Okay, except we got to get in the car. Great big SUV! Right next to the Prius. Oh, okay. My brother is very tall and narrow, so he works his way into the car. No problem. Everything's great. Over here, on the other side, my sister-in-law and her and my nephew get in. No problem. Okay. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Maybe not so much. I'll stand over here and I will wait and they'll back out. It'll be fine. Now, I don't know if you all have noticed, there's a small design flaw with the Prius. It has a teeny tiny back window. So he's backing up and I'm moving over and he's backing up and, okay, uh, uh, stop! Finally he does. Okay, now I can get in and I can buckle up and you can, we can drive, everything's fine. Three times this happens. Goodness gracious, I don't know what it is about me. So, if you ever offer me a ride, just know I'm going to get in really fast. I'm going to buckle up really safe. I'm going to watch your braking just for a couple of times, just in case. Because you never know, we might be family and just not know it. And even if we aren't, the next time you're driving while family, please remember me. <laughs> and one minute of silence for the judges. Contestant, a full mystery. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, a full mystery. Do not contact a postmaster, they will just give you free advice. 
<laughs> yes, I see a therapist every time I need to talk about my engagement. It was July 2005 in the beautiful city of Pune, India. I was really excited that it was going to be my engagement in two weeks. My wife was studying here in IIT Chicago, but due to some visa issues, she, she realized she could not make it. So, in normal families, when this happens, you usually cancel or reschedule. Not in my family. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, the absence of a fiancé wasn't a strong enough reason <laughs> for my family to cancel the engagement. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and guests from less weird families. <laughs> Today, I'm here to tell you why till this day, in my friends and family circles, I'm called the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> because at the end of my engagement, I had two rings. <laughs> so, you would ask, why did you go for the engagement if your fiancé was absent? There are two reasons. Reason number one, I am a pushover. <laughs> Reason number two, Aji, which means grandmother in my language, uh, and Big Papa, which is grandfather. They were my wife's or then fiance's grandparents who were out of town and they, they really wanted to, they were really excited about the engagement and they wanted, they, they felt that the cancelling of an engagement is a pretty bad omen. So the absence of a fiancé is not a bad omen. <laughs> I, said, I said, well, no, let me bless them. So the day arrived, I thought this was going to just be a party, but no, my other weird families called a lot of people. The thing about weird families is that they attract other weird people. <laughs> And so, they also called a priest, Panditji, who was, who was really weird. He always wanted to speak English, but just knew four words. <laughs> and he did that with an English, with an Indian headbutt. <laughs> well, most of you know what that is. <laughs> and he only said, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Mother was my mother-in-law's mother, 
and big papa was my father-in-law's father. So when I checked them into the same hotel room, <laughs> I did not exactly win brownie points. <laughs> To this day, they still accuse me of trying to hook them up. <laughs> <laughs> Panditji, whenever I visit India, gives me, gives me these awkward glances. <laughs> kind of things we are engaged. <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing that I'm working with my therapist is this recurring dream I have. I have the sex of the Lord of the Rings. Sam and Frodo are there, they're watching me. <laughs> My entire family is there watching me as well. Alji and Big Papa have their arms around Ganda. <laughs> <laughs> and something's pulling me and I'm running away from something. It's not Polo, somebody's catching my leg and he's not saying, My precious. <laughs> Who's catching me is Panditji. And he's saying, come back. Yeah, it's okay. Next contestant, Nikesh Kablani, Uncle Sam's Curry. Uncle Sam's Curry, Nikesh Kablani. October 18th, 2009, 4.30 p.m. Chicago O'Hare International Airport. A 24-year-old guy, tired and exhausted after a long international flight, steps into a cab, and these are the first words that he hears. Hey man, are you coming from the same country in which people have long and confusing names? <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I said to myself, oh boy, welcome to Uncle Sam's land. <laughs> the great United States of America. <laughs> Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmaster, and most honored guests. Since that first encounter, I've had several experiences. Sometimes excited, sometimes not so excited <laughs> about the various culture and the perceptual differences between the people of the United States and India. And unlike Mr. William Shakespeare's <coughs> What's in the Name philosophy, everything, everything starts with the name. So in US, people believe in simplicity when it comes to a name. Mike, John, simple, right? Patrick, ooh, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now in India, it's totally different. People have an inclination towards long and convoluted names. <laughs> Akash, Ashok, Muljan, Chablani. Uh, uh, what? That's just one name. <laughs> <laughs> and to all the Mikes and Johns out here, I envy you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Why? Because in my 
entire engineering school days in US, I was the only one whose name was never called. <laughs> so, a typical roll call would some, go something like this. Mike, here. John, here. A long pause and a frown. Yeah, that'd be me! <laughs>
public shutdown of the government of two countries. <laughs> in fact, in fact, we, both of the citizens of both of the countries are more concerned about these governments being starting up. I just love the fact that an Indian can now become Miss America. And finally, I'm proud to be a part of these cultures. This perfect blending, this perfect mixture is what I call my uncle Sanskrit. <laughs> <laughs> Contestant, Patrick Kubit, much about nothing. Much about nothing, Patrick Kubit. Type in and oh, <laughs> the 
strangest thing happens. My subconscious takes over, and instead of an O, it's an OK. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you doing? Come on, Patrick. It's Toastmasters. I mean, I love giving speeches. I know, but this is a contest, a funeral contest. People are going to expect to laugh. I don't have any material. Look up there. I got nothing, man. <laughs>
Testament, Jim Cundick, writing us crazy, <coughs> writing us crazy, Jim Cundick. Tell you three of mine. First one, tailgaters. Last thing I need is somebody 
six bumper lengths off of me going 70 miles an hour on the Kennedy. He's in an Armada. He's been watching NASCAR all weekend. I don't need this. And yes, I drive a Prius. <laughs> right over me. By the way, you SUV people, I park next to you on hot days. It's great shade. <laughs>
Mr. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots.
explain my name twice or four, four times in that meeting. So the next speech which I gave, I started with my name again, and I said, ah, oh, gosh, ah, oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I'd like to bring up, how many people are club officers? 
years. I know you have been counting the days until we have our second round of officer training. It will be right here. But he might be available for one or two other TLIs that we plan in January or February. So put it on your calendar. Remember, we got those super seven ribbons. But the best thing is, if your officers are trained, the club always does better than people in the red bar.